So what is a 1-bit DAC and how does it work? That's a digital to analog converter. So here I'm showing an analog signal, time signal in the time domain, in the gray pencil. And I'm also showing that we have sampled it at the period TS. And if we've got eight levels, we need three digital bits. And if we match up the samples with the bit sequences, we can get the digital sequence below. So this digital sequence would be stored in the computer or the mobile phone or whatever. And if you store these binary ones and zeros and you store the value of TS, then that's all you need to store. And you could recover the original signal if you had a fully uh, equipped digital to analog converter. So if your digital to analog converter was also an eight level digital analog converter or a three bit digital to analog converter, then you could recover this signal. Now for more information on recovering signals, regenerating signals, there's a video on the channel and you can find the details in the description below. Also, you can find videos on sampling uh, in the description below. So now we're going to ask the question, what about this one bit digital to analog converter? So it might be that you don't want to have a digital to analog converter with three bits. And in fact, for CD players, they're typically sampled with 16 bits. And so you would have 16 bits means 65,536 levels, not just eight levels like we've shown here. So 16-bit converters with 65,536 levels, they are very complex pieces of electronics and they are very expensive to make. So for consumer grade uh, CD players to play back the CD music, uh, it's very common to use a 1-bit DAC. So let's try to understand what that is because it's much cheaper. But to do that, we need to find a way to make a compromise. And the compromise is, the key idea is you must send your samples out into the analog domain at a much higher rate. So let's try to understand that. So to do that, let's look at this transition in the signal here. This part of the signal goes from the maximum level down to the minimum level. So we need to make sure that whichever DAC we use with less levels, we need to still make sure that our signal will be able to make that transition over that period of time. So let's first of all look at sending out at twice the rate. So that means we have samples, we're gonna create some samples halfway in between the samples that we have stored. So we, again, we've stored, stored these samples. This is what our digital signal is. So we, what we can do is digital interpolation. And again, there's a video on the channel for this. Digital interpolation would be able to put our samples in between, create samples using our digital signal processing to create these samples in between. So this is a standard technique of digital interpolation. And this is, this is something that we can do in the DSP, uh, bef again, before we put the samples out to the digital to analog converter. And now again, if we look at this transition, we can see that the most the transition is if we're going at twice the rate, so half the time period, the biggest transition now will go from here to here because it's only over half the time period. Of course, then another transition that's that big in the next time period. But what that means is, and we are now at this higher rate over the shorter time, we are now only covering four levels. One, two, three, four levels. We don't need all eight levels anymore. So if we can do it if we can do each output reference to where the previous signal was, then we would only need one, two, three, four to cover all the possibilities. Don't forget, this is the biggest transition. So all the other possible transitions will be less than this transition. So if we were to do this at this point here, we would need to have four levels, but we would need them to be slightly more spaced out than these four levels here. So in this case, they would need to be spaced out by a factor of 1.1. 166. So they are 1.166 because we need to have this level here. We can't just have the four levels, original levels, because it wouldn't give us that ability to get down to there, which means we couldn't get all the way down to there 
over two time slots. We'd be stuck at this level if we kept the original spacing. So here's another penalty that we're paying for increasing the, the, the rate we're sending out. It, it's a benefit because we get to use less levels. So we don't need as many bits to represent those levels. Uh, so we don't need three bits, we only need two, and that's getting us closer to a one bit DAC. But there's a penalty, as we can see, not only do we have to send them faster, but the levels have to be more spaced out. So they're now at this point here and this point here. Uh, so now we can do it at four times the rate. And now we can see that we only need, again, if we look at this extreme case, because that's the worst case, we need to make sure we can account for this one. So in this case, we now only need to have two levels. Uh, but again, we can see we need to be able to get the two levels down half of this way here and half of that way there is uh, down to here. And so these two levels, if you had twice, if you had four times the sampling, then these levels would need to be 1.75 times spacing. OK, so again, that's your penalty that you're paying here for having uh, less bits. If you have this, then you can, as you see, you only need two levels. And so that is now our one bit DAC. So you can see we've gone a higher sampling rate and we've got to a one bit DAC. And so with only two levels, a one bit DAC, we would over four time slots, we would be able to reproduce the analog signal of the original DAC, which had eight levels and was more expensive. Now, another thing we need to do is to realize that in fact is slightly worse than what I've said. In fact, it's a factor of two worse than this because I've shown an example here where it's transitioning in the negative direction. But we also need to allow, of course, if we took a, focused on this point here, we need to allow for the signal to go up as well as down. So what that means is these samples uh, locations actually have to be twice as far apart because you need to have it this in the negative to allow this one but you'd also need a positive change to allow for a possible positive change. If this one happened to go all the way back up at the next time slot to the maximum, you'd need to be able to have the positive times change as well. What you would need to do is to now go to eight times the sampling rate. And now I've shown the time slots for an eight times sample rate. So let's look at where those spacings are. So here on this, we've got, uh, a, there's a gap between, if you have this point here, if you're currently at this point here, and you've got an up and a down option in your one bit DAC, you can either go up or down from this point. Uh, and therefore uh, you've got, and the distance between those is 1.75. So those points are here and here. So these are the possible values that you've got in your one bit DAC at eight times the sample rate, if you're putting them out eight times, then you can either go up or down. And I think you can see here, when all this is done in digital processing before we put it out, we've, we've interpolated this in our DSP and we can see that we would want to go up. So this would be the point here. Okay, it's not exactly the analog signal, but it's the quantized version. And, and don't forget, in one bit DAC, you've only got two levels and you had to pick how far apart those levels are. You picked how far apart they were so that the signal in the, in the most extreme case can be accommodated when it goes from all the way up here to all the way down there. That's why they are this far apart. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll fill in all the others. So now I've drawn in horizontal lines at a spacing of 0 0.875 because that's half of 1.75. So the, the two, if you're at this level here, the two next levels are 1.75 apart, which means they are 0.875 up or 0.875 down. And then when you're at this one, you've got 0.875 up or 0.875 down. So these horizontal lines are the possible quantized values when you've got eight time sampling with a one bit DAC. So if this one here, we can see the next time slot, it can't be the same. It either goes up or down because it's only one bit DAC, there's two levels. So in this case, the next sample point would be this point here. And the next sample point from here at the next time, it either goes up or down. And so you can see this one has gone up. The next sample point for here, it would be either up or down. And clearly it's going down. The next sample point from here would be the up or down. Clearly it's up. The next sample point from here would be either up or down. Clearly it's down. 
and so on. The next sample point up or down, it would be clearly be down. So here we have the red points, which would be the interpolated points for a one bit DAC. So I think you can see that with what the effect is of increasing the sample rate, it means that you're getting your signal sending out closer together. And with a one bit DAC, you can get a signal now which does very closely match the original signal. So it's not as good as the original signal. So you are paying a penalty of going to a one bit DAC, but the benefit is you're getting a much cheaper digital to analog circuit and a chip, and therefore your electronics is cheaper and you can sell cheaper uh, CD players, for example. But there is this trade-off. So let's try to understand uh, some of the other elements of this trade-off. How do we actually go from these samples to the actual analog waveform? Let's look at this pulse width modulation example. So if we had a, we, we can only represent our signal with ones and zeros, don't forget. Uh, it's a digital signal, we need to turn it into an analog one. So we only have two levels in a one bit DAC. Uh, so we don't have the full eight levels. So what we could do is we could have our signal, we could make a signal in the time domain, which is equal to a value A for a period of time, and then equal to the value zero. Or we could make A and minus A, for example. Uh, and if in this case where we spend equal time in, in as a one, this would be represented by a one, this would be represented by a zero, this by a one, this by a zero, for example. If we made this waveform here, and then if we low pass filtered that waveform, what that means is we would be smoothing out this waveform or taking the average of this waveform. And uh, for more information on low pass filtering, and in fact doing ideal low pass filtering, there's a video on the channel. But I think even if you just uh, think about this and, and imagine what the average of this signal would be, it won't take you much to realize and be happy that the average of this signal is in fact half of A for all of the time. So if you low pass filter it and smooth it out, then you will get a signal that looks like this. Okay, so this is a signal where this is a value A divided by two. Now, one thing you could do is change the amount of time. You can't change the number of levels because we've only got a one bit DAC, but you could change the amount of time that you spend in the one state compared to the zero state. And that would enable you to change the voltage level after the low pass filter. So after the low pass filter, in this case, I think you could see that the value will be higher, be closer to A, because it spends more time in the A state. So this is what's happening inside the digital to analog converter of our one bit DAC, except instead of it happening at the rate that I'm showing here, we're now going to do it at the rate of eight times. Okay, so in this case over here, we had an eight bit DAC, we need to do it at a, at a rate of eight times in order to have a one bit DAC as a replacement. So now I'm gonna draw what that's gonna look like uh, for our signal over here. So now I'm, I'm looking at levels plus A and minus A. And when we've got a one, we, if we need to go up, we're gonna send a plus A. And if we need to go down, we're gonna send a minus A. So let's say we're starting here and we need to go up to get to the next signal here. So this will be a plus A over that time slot there. We're going up again and up again. So that means three lots of plus A. And then we go down. So that is a negative A. And then we go up again. So another positive A. Then we go down, down, and down. So three negative A's. Okay, so this is the signal that we would be putting in, the binary signal, because again, we've only got two levels. In our DAC, we would be putting this binary signal into a low pass filter. So we put that into a low pass filter. Okay, and I think you can see here, if this goes into a low pass filter, we get all the sharp edges get cut off and the, the filter accumulates energy through this part here, then starts to go down through this and then up through this and then down again through here. So if we were to look at the signal underneath this, uh, let's say, uh, let me try to draw the uh, output of our low pass filter here um, underneath, then we'd get an increase of the waveform and then 
uh, increasing and then it would be decreasing here, increasing again through here and decreasing again through here. And so this shape here matches the shape of our original analog signal. So this would be the recreated analog signal. This would be the recreated analog signal from the digital samples which are coming at eight times the sample rate with only two levels in a one bit DAC. And this would be re reproduced. So I think you can see that this is a way to get a signal which does match this with a cheap one bit DAC. So what are the, some of the engineering design choices? Well, you have to decide what this value of A is, plus A and minus A, because this is going into a low pass filter and you want the output to be re representing these levels here. These are just digital levels. We need them to match with the original level. So you've got a choice over A. You also have a choice over the bandwidth of the low pass filter. So that's another engineering design choice. And that will affect the response as I've drawn here. You also have a choice of how you do your digital signal processing to generate these red samples, the interpolated samples. And there, you need to be doing this at this much higher rate. And this depends on your digital processor. So your digital processor needs to be capable. And sometimes it's capable of doing uh, close to an ideal low pass filter to interpolate these and sometimes it's not and so this is another point where you can get discrepancies between the original signal and the reconstructed one bit DAC signal where they're not actually exactly the same. So what about returning to our CD player? So in CD player had as we remember over 65,000 levels. Does it really send these samples out at 65,000 times the sample rate? And the answer is no. The sample rate for CD is 44.1 kilo samples per second. So you'd have to send that out to, a, to do a true one bit DAC, you'd have to be sending that out at 2.89 giga samples per second. And that is not the case because that, even though that was, would be a one bit DAC, running at that rate is then expensive. So you need to do a compromise. And in fact, in most CD players, they use a sampling factor here. Instead of eight, like I've drawn here, they use 256. But 256 is still a long way from 65,536. So what do they do instead? They can't get all the way to do the exact one bit DAC like I've drawn here. They must have some other tricks up their sleeve. One of the tricks is, that they don't allow for the full transition within these picking these levels. So they make the assumption that most of the time the signal is not transitioning through extreme cases like this. Most of the time the signal is doing much less extreme transitions and therefore you don't need to have these levels so far spaced apart that you can get all the way down from the, the, the extremes. So they have much smaller spacings and then you don't need to oversample as much. You can get away with oversampling at 256 instead of the 65,000. You then need to have some mechanism for checking if there is an extreme case happening. So you'll know that there's an extreme case happening if your reconstruction is continually hitting the limit and going up, up, up and up and we call the slew rate of the actual signal, it might be much faster then you intervene and they, you know, they have circuitry that introduces, starts making these um, gaps bigger or introduces a big analog offset in order to compensate for those extreme cases when you do have a signal going through uh, one of these extreme transitions. So if this video has helped you to understand a one bit DAC, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check out the description below where you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.